In this video, we want to spend some time talking about The Mix. To my knowledge, Mike McCann has never published his formula for fibrous adobe. But he's also never hidden it, as evidenced by his willingness to teach Martin Adams. And Martin does a great job of laying out the basic ratios in his YouTube video from MakePaperCrete.com which produces a paper creep mix that has the consistency of a slurpee or an ice cream shake which is ideal for mixers with a downspout like the kind Martin designed. But that technique doesn't work so well if you're working completely by yourself and because I was going to need to scoop it out of the mini toe mixer I needed a mix that was less like a shake and more like oatmeal cookie dough. So I went looking for the mix ratios from other pioneers in the field. Mikey Skylar does a pretty good job of disclosing most of the ingredients in his mix. As does Judith Williams, if you watch all of her videos and pay careful attention. Which all needed to be cut in half to fit the proportions of my mixer. Which for the mini toe mixer consists of 50 gallons of water, 15 gallons of paper, which is essentially three five-gallon buckets that have been soaking overnight, five gallons of dirt, my preference is something with a high clay content, 80 pounds of standard concrete mix, two number 10 cans of Portland cement, which yields a total of 70 gallons of mix by volume, which is almost always dead on what I need to fill my gang molds with a single batch. Even though I've said several times that this ain't rocket science, there are a couple of small things you need to know about basic chemistry. Because apart from how much water you put into the mix, you'll need to pay attention to your cement ratios to prevent shrinkage. Because different amounts of cement cause different amounts of shrinkage. I won't go into all the detail here because the folks at livinginpaper.com have a fabulous article about it on their website where they actually explain the science of shrinkage. But essentially when you shred the paper you make cellulose fibers and if you don't have enough cement in your mix that fibrous structure will collapse under its own weight during the drying process. As illustrated in this photo where both batches use the same amount of water, but the bricks with the red shrinkage were made using just the 80 pound bag of concrete, while the bricks with the yellow shrinkage were made with an additional two cans of Portland cement. Remember, we're not talking about the amount of water used to make the mix runny or thicker. We're talking about the amount of cement necessary to keep that fibrous structure stabilized, which becomes very obvious after you've made a few batches. And because cement is your most expensive commodity when making paper cream, it pays to make sure that you've calculated your mix right. Because in the end, using too much cement will double your costs, but using too little cement will double your labor because you'll have to make more bricks to do the same size project. 